This small tube of Yenman Blue cost $34. That might not seem like a lot of money, but if you were to buy an entire gallon at that price, it would cost $5,850. So why is Yenman Blue so expensive and will the cost ever come down? We're gonna talk about that in this video. I'm also going to try and mix Yenman Blue from regular colors and I'll make a little color sample of it just to show what it looks like. Yenman Blue was discovered in 2009 by Moss Subramanian and his graduate student, Andrew Smith. In case you're wondering, the name Yenman came from the three elements used to make this pigment. And those are yttrium, indium, and manganese. That also explains why the I and the M are capitalized. The reason why it's such a big deal is that this is the first pigment discovered in over 200 years. Artists only have a certain amount of pigments to choose from. Those are phthalo blue, ultramarine, cobalt, Prussian, and cerulean. In his TED talk, Ma says that blue is very difficult for nature to create. In fact, things like butterfly wings or peacock feathers that look blue, those are actually what are known as structural colors. The color doesn't come from pigment. It actually comes from the way light reflects off of the structure. It's known as structural color. Another cool thing about Yenman blue is that it's non-toxic. Plus it's light fast, which means it won't fade when exposed to UV light. Cobalt blue deep, looks similar to Yinmin Blue, but cobalt is also toxic if you don't handle it properly. So when I first got this tube, I wasn't expecting too much, but after I started working with it, I really began to develop like an affinity for this color. It's pretty vivid, and I like how it looks when you use it full strength. I first made this color chip of Yinmin Blue just to get an idea of what it looks like. So here's what that color chip looks like. It does kind of look like ultramarine, or maybe even cobalt blue, but it doesn't have that magenta bias that ultramarine blue does. I made this color chip by placing vinyl letters down onto the wood panel, and then I painted the Yinmin blue over the top of it. Once it dried, I could peel the vinyl lettering off, and it revealed the white surface underneath. I also put a coat of varnish on it so it's glossy. The one thing I was really curious about is, can you mix Yinmin blue from other colors? From what I read online, they say it is possible, but I really wanted to find out for myself. So I got my colors out and gave it a shot. Here's how that went. Going to match the color of Yenmin Blue. This is ultramarine blue and a little bit of titanium white. And I think I might dry this because it looks a little streaky. It'd be easier to build up the color on top of blue instead of white. This is more ultramarine and a little bit of white. It might need a little bit of phthalo. I think the phthalo blue will counteract the magenta bias of the ultramarine. It has to go a little darker. It looks pretty good. So it is possible to mix the same color from phthalo blue and ultramarine. So if you really want to use this shade of blue, you can mix it yourself without having to spend extra money on it. But I was really curious about this pigment, so I put down the money and picked up a tube of it. I'm using it to paint this painting of oranges on a blue towel, and I really like how it's working so far, especially when you use it full strength. At first, I was worried that when I mixed it with white that it would become kind of dull or like a pastel color, but so far it's working really well. And this is the only blue pigment that I'm using in this painting. I'm not using ultramarine or phthalo or anything like that. According to Golden Paints, the reason why Yenman Blue is so expensive is because the elements used to make it are extremely rare and they have one source. That one source is Shepherd Color. Having used this color in a painting, I would definitely add it to my palette if it was like the cost of a normal tube of paint, but I don't think it's ever going to become that popular because of the price. Hopefully in the future, there'll be a breakthrough of some sort where they can manufacture this in larger quantities at cheaper prices. But until that happens, I don't think artists are going to adopt this and use this on a regular basis. Is it worth buying it to make your paintings different? I would say probably not. As I've proven, you can mix it from other colors. If you do want to try it out, you can check out Golden's website. They produce it in limited quantities, so it might not be in stock. Here's the finished painting. This corner here is pretty much full strength Yenmin Blue. And then I added white to it in these sections. For the background, this is black with Yenmin Blue. I mentioned I used the Golden Fluid Acrylics, but I also used the Satin Glazing Liquid for some of the soft edges and to create subtle effects. I've also been testing out this palette from Magello and this brush washer from Masterset, which is pretty convenient. You can get fresh water whenever you need it. And it has a reservoir underneath that collects all the dirty water that you can recycle. Up next, you can watch my other color theory videos, which I organized into a playlist. I also made a video about how I sketch with acrylic markers, so I don't worry about making mistakes. Thanks for watching.